What's going on YouTube? This is Marcus back for another video. I'm here to do my review for Greenleaf Season 3 Episode 1 Strange Current. So, just a little bit of backstory. Y'all remember at the end of last season, Zora had ran off with Isaiah after um, Jacob had punched him in the face at the Contillion Ball after he slapped her in, in, in the hallway by the bathrooms. Um, Y'all remember Lady May kicked Bishop at, out the house at the end of the episode and he was at the hotel with Rochelle Cross. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. So, let's get into the episode. So, where's my notes at? Okay. So, the episode starts off where we see Lady May is um, sitting in the dining room and she's um, staring off into space, it seems like. So, she discovered that Bishop had slept with his sister Mavis. Y'all remember that was revealed last season. And not just one time, but it was several times after they got married. Because they, they had, they had, he had cheated with Mavis before they got married. But then after they got married, they were still messing around for, a, you know, a few more times. Um, so, Bishop is at the Biltmore Hotel. So, he wakes up. And, well, pause. We see a scene where Rochelle was rubbing on his arm and she kept saying, James, James, trying to wake up. And then you see him rubbing on a pillow like he was expecting somebody to be in the bed. And so he turns over and sees her and he's like, I, thank you, I needed that. And so I'm like, now don't tell me she done put the thing on him. Um, and she says, you know, you had a stressful day and it's not even noon. Um... But eventually we find out that she had pretty much just let him sleep there. And she says that I wish I could have done more to comfort you. And he replies by saying, I'm still married. Now, I, I, now my thing is this. Your wife put you out of the house. Why you didn't go stay at Jacob's house? Or why you didn't just get your own hotel room? Now, first of all, as, as big as that house is, he could have just went and slept in, in one of the other wings. You wasn't going to put me out of the whole entire house. I mean, that house is big enough for y'all to be able to avoid each other. So, um... He, you know, she's still trying to come on to him. And he keeps saying, I'm still married. And she was like, girl, she, she threw you out of the house. And he says, I'm married to God's vision of the man I was meant to be. So, um... He goes to check his phone and he found out that Zora has run off and can't be found. So the next scene we see when Charity comes back to the house, um, but they basically tell her everything that goes on. And she's basically like, I'm gone for a day and all this happens and where's daddy? Um, so we see that Lady May, she's a finding another reason to go off on Gigi. Now, I'm confused because last season, well, la the last, the latter part of the season, after she killed Mac, they, she was acting like she was, lo like she loved Gigi so much and whatever. So, when she was going off on her, I'm just confused. Like, what's going on? So, um, basically telling her, when you came home for face funeral, you promised me that you hadn't come to sell Discord and now look at us. And Grace was like, girl, what did I do? And Lady May tells her she's like a bull that ran around in a china shop acting like it's God work. And Gigi looks at her and said, girl, in this family, it is God's work. Now, I was with Gigi like, girl, I ain't have nothing to do with Zora running away. I ain't have nothing to do with daddy. You you put daddy out of the house, not me. Um, and as far as the Max situation is concerned... That's the true, real reason why I came back. But um, the real reason why she don't really care for Grace because Grace is, ain't got time to be living living a lie or trying to put on fronts. Grace is trying to live in her truth. So, Zora's been found. Um, you know, Jacob is laying down the law. He took her wallet, ATM card, the phone, or whatever. Cause he was like, girl, I know you got another phone. Where's your phone? He told her, girl... From now on, we clocking, you know, your every step. Now, normally Carissa tends to be the more harsh parent, but at this scene, she was trying to get him to like it, lighten up. Jacob was like, girl, we found this girl 10 miles shy of the state line in a Roach Motel. 
told her girl, if you want to act like a little criminal, I'm going to treat you like one. He searched the pockets and sent her to her room. Um... So we get to the scene where Rochelle shows up at Calvary and she tries to walk past the assistant. Sister said, girl, uh-uh. You can't just walk. You was not the wife. You, I don't even think I've ever seen Lady May just walk up into his office. She normally comes and asks, is he busy? So I'm like, girl, how you figure you just going to come walk up in here? Um, she says, well, is the bishop busy? He says, she was like, yeah, I think he busy. So then she buzzed Bishop and was like, Miss Cross here. He said, okay, send on in. She said, girl, look at me just like Moses, parting seeds left and right. And so she tried to grab the mail. The girl said, girl, give me this. So I've noticed, um, well, I'm going to skip that part. So, you know, Bishop had enough sense to draw some boundaries with Rochelle. He tells her that because when she came in, he told her, you know, she apologized. Oh, excuse me. She apologized for trying to come on to him earlier. And he basically tells her, you know, it's my, you know, I apologize. You know, it was all me because you should have never been there in the first place. And he tells her that she's free to come to the church and worship, but they don't need to be really spending a whole bunch of personal time together. Um, and she says, you know, I, you know, I understand and I'm willing to do anything for you, if, including give you a space. So at this particular scene, Gigi comes in and she says, well, is Bishop busy? She was like, no, nah, girl, go ahead. And so when Gigi walks in and she sees them all close and cuddly and laughing and kicking in, and Rochelle was like, you know, it, it, you know, I should go. Um, and, and Gigi was like, well, can I buy you a cup of coffee? You know, he says, please. And they leave. So. Brittany, the homegirl Brittany is not feeling Jacob at all. Now, she was basically telling him, like, girl, because if y'all remember, he was trying to do this outreach to the homeless. And so she was like, the homeless ain't paying no money, so we're kind of in a deficit right now. Now, my thing is that they homeless. Why would you expect them to pay some money? Now, on the other hand, if you're going to be doing... Because nine times out of ten, if you're doing outreach, you're going to be kicking out more money than you bring in. But my, I, at the same time, if you're going to be doing stuff like that, then you need to have an influx of money coming in from somewhere else. Um, before you can try to do... But it's going to be hard for you to try to keep any money, especially when you got thieves in the temple. But we're going to get to that in a minute. But Brittany was basically telling him, like, girl, you about to run this church into the ground. So she going off, going off. Jacob said, girl, we about to live stream next month. So... Girl, just don't worry about it. So she walks out. And Tasha comes in and was like, you know, I ain't never heard her talk to Basie like that. If it was if it was up to me, she would be fired. Tasha is a whole nother snake too. So we get to a scene where Kevin and Charity was on the phone. Um, he basically like, girl, I want to see my son. She was like well, I don't know when you're going to have time to see your son because I'm about to go back out on tour tomorrow. And he was trying to get her to leave the baby with him. Um, and she was like, well, how I know you're not going to be in one of your moods again? How I know you're not just going to up and disappear? Now, Kevin had been telling her, like, girl, we can go to court. Like, I, I, I'm ready. You know, my, bo my boo, you know, he got my back. He been, you know, he done put me on this legal game. I know what it is. So... But my thing is, why you can't just leave him with your parents or leave him with Gigi? I mean, if you don't trust Kevin, why you can't just leave him, you know, with one of them and he can just come over to the house and see him or pick him up on the weekends or whatever? I, I, I think in her mind, she kind of feel like either on one hand, he might just decide I can't do this no more and disappear. Or on the other hand, he might try to do some slick stuff and get full custody. So... Bishop comes back into his office and we, well, Bishop comes back from being out with Gigi and he gets the mail and he sees the letter from the IRS. So somehow he was at, between the time he picked up the letter and came back. Ouch. Ooh wee. I just called a Charlie horse. <laughs> oh Lord. Ooh. Anyway. So, somehow between the time he picked up the mail and the time he came in the office, he was able to read the letter. Lady May was like, girl, 
you, you, you cheated your way out of every good thing that God has ever given you. So, in other words, she looked at herself as something good. Now, my thing is this, because she was questioning him, like, girl, where was you at? And he was like, my phone was off. And she was like, girl, where was you at? Now, my thing is, if you put him out in the house, why are you worried about where he at? That was my thing. So, he basically tell her, like, girl, you know, Matt was supposed to handle whatever the finances was with IRS. Apparently, he paid off this dude to, I guess get rid of the debt or whatever but the, the guy had been arrested so now they owe two million dollars so she going off like girl how you let this happen he was like it was not it won't me it was your brother like what you mean so he was telling her like you know i think pretty much he told her like girl i think the best way for us to beat this is to be a united front under one roof she told him girl you're not coming back home now my thing is Y'all married, so I'm assuming everything, y'all name is probably on everything. Both of y'all names is on the house. Both of y'all name is on the church, deeds, and whatever. So, if they come after him, they coming after you too, girl. So, I would think that you would do what you can to to stand with him so y'all can figure out what it is that y'all gonna do. Now, how does that work? Like, because he was saying something about take up, take up a love offering. So, I... But, but most times when you do a love offering, you have to tell them what the love offering is going to. You can't just be like, girl, we're taking up a love offering. Like, because I know you're not going to get up in front of the church and say we owe $2 million to the IRS. Because then they're going to be looking at you like, girl, what you been doing with your money? Um, now, why they don't just take out of the second mortgage? Well, they they getting older. Because I, I was going to say, why they, don't just, why they don't just take out a second mortgage on their house? Because the house looks like it's, it's worth close to $2 million. But, I mean, they're getting older. So, I mean, it's, it's going to take a lot for them to pay the house back off, I guess. So, all right, where, was, where am I at? So, Grace, Charity, and Jacob meet up at Jacob's house. Now, Jacob has always been May's favorite. So they was trying so Gigi was trying to talk Jacob into trying to basically talk to mama, Lady May, get her to forgive daddy and take him back. Where on the other hand, Gigi was always Bishop's favorite. So they were trying to get Gigi to talk to Bishop, tell Bishop girl, you need to go home, get on your knees, beg and plead, plead for my uh May to let you back in the house. Um Jacob said, I'm a, you know, I talked to mama and check up on her, but as far as me, you know, telling her to take him back, I ain't got nothing to do with that girl. Um, I'm still, I'm, I'm, and I'm still trying to figure out why they keep blaming because Gigi was, I mean, because Charity told, told Gigi, like, girl, to pretty much like, girl, everything was fine until you came back in the picture. I'm like, no, everything wasn't fine. It's just that y'all was, you know, pushing everything under the rug. Now, it does seem coincidental that when she came back, all this stuff popped off, but. You can't blame her for that. Y'all family been jacked up for the longest. So, Grace, go, we see Grace was at her house with Darius and she was, you know, telling him whatever was going on. And so she was asking him to go to church. He was just like, no, I'm not going to church. You know, I'm not trying to be a part of this soap opera. Ooh, excuse me. With a, with a cross on my back. And she was just like, girl, now first of all, if you're supposed to be a pastor or a preacher, why are you in a relationship with somebody that ain't even interest, interested in going to church? Like, is he even saved? Like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm just asking. So, but eventually he was like, girl, he left. And that was pretty much it. Now, he was trying to play it off like, it's okay, it's okay, but you can tell he was feeling some type of way, like, girl. Now, I do remember him in, in I think, the last season. I think, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I do remember him saying that he had a bad experience with church, and that's why he doesn't really care to go to church. So, Sunday morning, we see that um, it's time to go to church, and Lady Man ain't got no clothes on. Um, she was just like, girl, I can't go to church. And so she was like, well, what do you do on a Sunday? Because that's how I feel sometimes. Like, if I'm not at work and for whatever reason, like, so maybe my pastor had to preach out of town and I wasn't able to go, it's, I do be sitting at home like, girl, like, what am I supposed to do? And I'm not the type of person that just go to anybody's church because I know, you know, it's, it's other churches out here, but I'm just not the type of person that just go up to anybody's church. Um, 
you have to be careful with that because everybody's you know everybody's table is not meant for you to eat from. Um, so I'm gonna just leave that right there. So we get a scene where you know everything was going on. Charity, she ain't she can't lip sync worth nothing. Like you could look at her and tell she was. I mean that's her voice of course, but she was lip syncing in this scene. So we see what Deacon S. Sykes was asking about Lady May's whereabouts, and girl Grace um, was like, "Girl, you know what?" Well, no, because she says, I'm assuming that Lady May is under the weather. Grace said, like, you know she got a cold. And so when Bishop get up there, now how about when Bishop got up there to get the microphone after Charity finished singing and he was trying to hug her, she was like, girl, back up off me. So and then she looked and seen Kevin out in the audience, so she walked off the stage mad. And so Grace, so Bishop gets up and says, Lady May had to take care of some family business, wherever it is that she's from. And so, um... The lady looked at Grace like, girl, why you tell me she was sick? Now, me personally, I just would have been like, it ain't none of your business. Like, if it was meant for you to know, she would have texted you and said, hey, pray for me, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like, you you don't have no monopoly on, girl. Anyway, so. He goes on to talk about the um, unimaginable courage of Jesus of Naz Nazareth. And you hear uh, uh, Rochelle preach, Bishop. I said, girl, she's so extra. <laughs> um, now, it's funny that you preached the message about courage, but you just stood there and lied about uh, where your wife was at. Like, if, if, if you're going to be preaching about courage, why not just go to black girl, lady may kick me out the house. I don't know what's, what's going on with her right now. So... At the church, Charity go over there and talk to Kevin like, girl, what are you doing here? He was like, this is still my church. This is my son's church. Um, she still going on to talk about, you know, taking the son with her on tour. So he tells her, listen. I forgot what he said, but like he was like, girl, either you going to leave him with me or you not going on tour because... You, if you take it, take my son across state lines or across county lines, that's kidnapping. Which I, I believe, I mean, I mean, I understand he put her through a lot when he left. But if the man is telling you that he had an epiphany, I guess you can say, and he, you know, want to do the right thing, let let the man spend time with his son. Now, I don't really know if you should leave him with him while you gone. But girl, leave the baby at the house with mom and daddy or whoever, and let him come over and spend time with his son, like. Now, you up here saying about going to heaven, but you still holding this unforgiveness in your heart. And my Bible told me that if you don't forgive somebody else, and Jesus ain't going to forgive you. And if, and, 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 and ain't, ain't nobody going to heaven that Jesus ain't forgave. So, you need to work that out. Anyway, so, Lady May, now, going back to when Lady May told Gigi, like, girl, I don't, what am I supposed to do? Now, at that particular scene, I was thinking to myself, like, why you don't just go to Jacob Church? So we see her, like, walking. Um, she was at a park, and then she was at a restaurant. Then eventually she does go to trial, and she kind of steps in the back door. She sees Jacob up there preaching. She's smiling. Now, the receptionist is rude. Or maybe I'm seeing stuff, because it was a glare on my TV. So maybe I'm seeing stuff, but I could have sworn I saw somebody sitting at that receptionist desk. And I didn't hear them say good morning, welcome to trial, for nothing like that. Um, so while she's standing at the back door, we see Tasha. Not me. If I used to be the first lady, and I turned over, we, me and my husband turned over the church to somebody else, and then my my husband allegedly went missing. I don't think I could stay there at that church. I would I would have had to go somewhere else. So Tasha comes up to Lady May like, "Girl, why are you not at Calvary?" And I'm sitting there like. You act like y'all best friend. That's not that's not none of your business. So she asked her, does she want to have a cup of tea? Um she pouring her to tea. Lady May said, girl, is this what you what they got you doing? Like pouring tea? Um So while she's getting her the cookies, she tells Lady May about some first lady in Winston Salem who was left by her husband after twenty seven years of marriage. Um and adding insults to injury, she talks about how the first lady tripped on some steps and fell over the balcony. 
fell down, fell two stories. She hit her head, and now she, one of her eyes is like, she kept saying, look at the eye, look at the eye. <laughs> Um, but he, whatever, I don't know what kind of revelation Lady May got, but she was like, girl, I got to get up out of here. Um, girl, we get the prayer. Now, she got, he got Zora up there holding, Zora is standing in the aisle holding the offering basket. And she looking around, I was sitting there like, now I know good and well she ain't gonna steal no money. Why she still, like, girl, if you're going to steal money, at least wait until you go in the back and count the money. Then you slip you a, a few a few Benjamins in your pocket. But she looking around. She pulled out something. Um, I don't know what it was. It looked like it was 100, but I'm not sure. When she bought it up and she's still looking around. So, Lord Jesus, we're going to keep Zora lifted up in prayer. So, um... We get to the back office and Jacob was basically t saying, because Carissa was telling Jacob, like, you know, you did a good job, whatever. Jacob was like, it's just something just seemed off. He was like, I couldn't really focus because I was scared. Girl, I, I'm 21 minutes in. Let me hear you. He was saying that he couldn't really focus because he was scared that Zora might run out the, run out the back door. So, not long after Carissa was telling Jacob, like, girl, you did a good job. This is a good message. Brittany, Brittany comes up in there like, girl, you must have been off your game today. Because and you know and I'm I'm assuming that the people felt it too because the offering was a little bit low. And so he looks at Carissa and said, "You hear this right?" Told her girl, "You fired." And so after she leave out, Carissa was just like, "I thought me and you was supposed to gonna talk about this." He was like, "It's for the best." Now my thing is. And I'm and I'm always a bit advocate of before you get rid of somebody, find somebody that can do that job because judging by the decisions that you're making with the church, you ain't good with money no way. Um, and some of your past your past history show that you're not that good with money, especially since you used to have a gambling problem. So, like, who's gonna be in charge of the finances? Hello, like, you should at least been trying to find somebody else that can do what they do do what she does or do it better so later on in the scene we see well later on in the episode we see tasha on the phone with britney britney is like girl you know they just got it out for you pretty much she playing both sides. I'm like, now how you j had just told Jacob he need to fire her. Then you on the phone telling Brittany like, girl, he 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 just trying to take over because he, he the new pastor now. Like, girl. So we see Rochelle was on online looking up lingerie or negligee. One of I don't know the difference. Um, you know, cause she's still trying to get Bishop. And girl, I, I I'm just hoping that whatever they got going on. Hoping that it get exposed before it's too late because Gigi had even was telling Darius at the church when they went to lunch She was just like, you know, Rochelle she, You know, Rochelle is, you know, been getting close to my daddy and she's trying to get close to me, but I don't trust her You know, she told Darius like girl uh, In spite of what my mama says, I care about the church and my family and I'll be daggone if I let somebody like that Come through and try to take over the church um you know, because Gigi was just like, I can't, you know, I can't put my finger on it, but I know she done did something like this at another church. And do y'all remember when she first came on the scene, she did say, I can't remember the exact story. I do remember she said something about having cancer, but I think she kind of alluded to the fact that she was messing around with the pastor at the other church she was at and, you know, whatever. So, at the close of the episode, we see Bishop returns to the Greenleaf house to get his things, but Lady May has a change of heart. Um, and she tells him, you can come home, but only until we figure out this mess with the IRS. Um, so that was pretty much it, y'all. So, I'm going to be back for part two, or well, episode two, because like I said, this was a two-part, a two-day premiere. Um, uh, but y'all comment down below and tell me what y'all thought about this. How did y'all feel about this episode for a premiere? I thought the episode was pretty good. Um... It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of mess going on in, in, in this in, in the Greenleaf clan. Y'all better get it together. Um, 
So yeah, that's all I got to say. Y'all be sure to like this video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Also be sure to share this video wherever you like to share videos. Um, like I'm, I'm going to start saying this in all my videos. Don't just be a, a, a subscriber to say you subscribe or be an active subscriber. You know, comment. I do respond to the comments. We can converse. Um, also be sure to follow me on my social media, which will be in the description box down below. And I will talk to y'all later. Peace.